Hello, uh, this is what is JSR. So first off, I'm Leo Katmeyer. I'm engineer at Dino, and I'm working on JSR. I am basically the only maintainer right now. Uh, and at Dino, I also work on implementing web APIs and other things related to documentation. So JSR is a JavaScript registry that supports TypeScript out of the box. You don't have to configure tsconfig.json and then have a transpilation step in your build system when doing a publish of a package. It does it all for you. You don't have to worry about it. It's really painful with NPM, so this makes it much simpler. But it does not replace NPM. Uh, it lives alongside it. So JSR, you can still use NPM packages. You can not publish JSR uh, like packages that depend on JSR to NPM yet, but that's something we're still trying to figure out how to do. And then it's compatible across different runtimes. So if you go to the JSR website to a package, you can see that there's a compatibility table. So it will say if a package is compatible with Node.js, Dino, Bun, Cloudflare Workers, or the web. And I think that's all the options we currently support. And um, it's completely open source and free, unlike NPM, which is one of the key points for JSR that I'll get back to later. Uh, so why did we build uh, JSR? Uh, because, well, publishing to NPM can be sometimes too com complicated, especially if you do TypeScript. It gets really tricky. But also, ever anyone created a a project that you want to publish to NPM and then you suddenly find that you have 10 different config files in your root directory, I don't think that's reasonable. So getting away with all configuration and making it as simple as possible for developers is one of the main goals for JSR. Just make it simple. Um, and NPM has stopped innovating. So the JavaScript ecosystem moves quite quickly. However, NPM doesn't. So does anyone here know what the latest feature is that NPM added? It's the small TypeScript icon next to the title. And that was three years ago. That's the latest feature that NPM added, which is really bad. NPM is the core of the JavaScript ecosystem so they should be adding new features and innovating more, but they don't. One main reason being that it's owned by GitHub and in such Microsoft. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are completely open. So JSR is completely open source. Uh, the governance of JSR is open. It's nothing closed doors. Everything is completely transparent. And I think that gives us more value for the community and for the ecosystem as a whole to add new features or help people that have problems because NPM is also known for not being very helpful to people that have problems on the system. And also, again, it's completely free. You don't have to pay like $7 a month if you want private packages. JSR does not currently support private packages yet, but we will do it. So uh, some additional features that uh, JSR supports. Um, tokenless auth. So JSR lets you publish packages from GitHub CI without having to do any authentication yourself. It's done automatically by GitHub using OIDC tokens. So GitHub just sends a special header uh, when, we, when we try to publish through a GitHub CI and uh, that header contains information about who triggered the publish and JSR validates that that is actually correct. Then we have provenance. So again, if you run a uh, uh, publishing pro uh, step via uh, GitHub Actions, uh, JSR can generate package provenance, which proves who was the author and various other information that actually proves that a package is actually secure. Not the source code being like not malicious, but rather that the provenance or where it came from is actually where it should be coming from. And then we also have uh, documentation. So JSR automatically generates documentation for your packages and um, uh, for any of the source code that's exported and 
uh, based on the types, it just generates automatic documentation that is visible on the website for any package. You don't need to set up like TS docs or other systems. It's just built in into the registry. So JSRs is based on a governance system, and the governance is there for a reason. Uh, again, J JavaScript is not controlled by one person, but by a committee. So in this case, for JavaScript, it's TC39. JavaScript implementations are open source. So there's V8, GSC, and a few other implementations of JavaScript. And these are all open source. But NPM is closed source. Why? And it shouldn't be like that. The community could not innovate with NPM. So we need to create an alternative, JSR, which stands for JavaScript Registry. And the registry for JavaScript needs to be open source, governed by the community, and be open to innovation, like everything else in the JavaScript ecosystem. So the board members for JSR are currently Evan Yu, the creator of UJS and Veed, and founder of Void Zero, Isaac Schluter, the original creator of NPM, and co-founder of uh, VLT.sh, James Snell, a uh, Node TSC member, principal system engineer at Cloudflare, Luca Casanato, uh, software engineer at Dino, and a T39 representative, and Ryan Dahl, creator of Node.js and Dino. These are currently our only board members. The board was created about one month ago, uh, but there's potential that new people will join the board in the direction of JSR. So what does the board even do? Uh, it oversees that JSR goes to be an open foundation. So currently, JSR is owned by the Dino company, but this is only temporary. We want to move it to be under an open system like, let's say, kind of like a charity or some other type of open business. So we currently are exploring possibilities for this, for example, joining OpenJS Foundation or other solutions. Um, then the board also decides on the general directions of the board, of the project. Uh, so if we, it's not about specific individual features, but it's more about generic uh, term of what should JSR be focusing on, what kind of direction does it go. And uh, the board also makes decisions based on these pieces of information that they decide on, and, but usually the board stays out of most things. It's really about more management and not implementation. Uh, then they also uh, decide on how future members get elected and also establishing of the moderation group. The moderation group is a group that currently does not exist yet, but it will be a group in charge of on how JSR is to be moderated. They will set the rules on what is allowed, what is not allowed, and things will, uh, similar to that. And then determining how to review open source contributions to the project. So uh, we currently, it's basically just me going through open issues and PRs and just landing what I think is right and other things not. So this should be more formalized and have a more concrete plan. And uh, yeah, uh, how are we on time? Okay. So maybe we can do a quick demo of the JSR website. Um, so uh, the JSR web landing page is quite boring. It just has a search for packages and publishing a package and a few announcements. And then if I zoom out, yeah, there is, a, we have a list of a few different uh, popularity-based packages. So featured ones are packages that we decide that we think are good packages that we want to display on front of the page, recently pop updated, and new to JSR. And here we kind of explain again the things I went through. But if we go to, for example, um, STD collections, here this is a typical landing page for a package. So again, we can see at the top here, the works with. So this is decided by, uh, by the maintainers of the package. It's not decided automatically. Detecting which system is supported is really complicated. So we just hope that people select the right things. 
then we also have a scoring system. So just our packages have a score that is uh, based on various factors, like it has a readme, it has documentation for everything that's exported, uh, has a description, and other things like this. Currently, the check boxes are not that many, but we do want to add more over the f future, but uh, I think currently this is a good amount. And not everything needs to be uh, ticked off for it to count as 100%. You can go beyond 100%, but 100% is the recommended amount. And then, yeah, so a landing page here can have some various documentation that's uh, provided by the authors. And then we have on the site on how to use this package. So you can select what system you want, and it will remember for next time. Uh, so in this case, I care about Dino. So I go to Dino, and there is a Dino add just our collection, or, and then I can input it using that entry that was added to the import map for Dino, or I can just get a direct import that can be just used directly without having to add it to any config file. And then we have individual symbol documentation. So I can quickly go to the docs tab, and here we get an overview of everything that's exported. So in this case, default means the default entry point, and we have a bunch of different things that are exported in this STD collection package. And I can click on a random one, and we get a definition, and then some documentation that I assume Yoshia wrote, <laughs> and uh, a few examples. And then we also have a breakdown of like the type parameters, uh, individual normal parameters and their documentation and return type. And this is completely based on the typings provided and also JSDoc comments. It's a combination of both. And uh, that's mostly a quick overview over packages. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. We also do currently have uh, bi-weekly open working group meetings that you can join uh, via this URL, and you can find the website at gsr.io and the GitHub if you want to contribute or help out. Thank you. So I would like to know about security checks in JSL. So like NPM has an uh, NPM audit command. So, but I think JSR doesn't have these types of command, right? It no, JSR currently does not any have any support for like uh, mm -hmm. security auditing. We want to support it. Uh -huh. uh, we just haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's We have so a long list of things we want okay. to add. So currently you see that JSL doesn't have these types of plan, but uh, you JSL would like to add th these types of uh, yes. sub commands. Like yeah, okay. Yeah. So and, uh, so the second question is so so if JSL uh, library has some vulnerable issues, so they can report these types of issues in some documents like uh, JSL docs and stuff like that. So yeah. So how do I, uh, so how do I know these types of issues from JSL repository? Yeah, um, that kind of falls back to the same previous point. Also, that we currently don't have any idea on how to do this currently. Mm. We want to do it, we just haven't had the time yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like many other features. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. 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 I got. It. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. <laughs>